After 20 years, the Taliban has again taken control of Afghanistan. Activists around the world have termed this as the return of the Dark Ages. Many also believe that the fundamentalist Islamic group poses the biggest threat to arts and culture in the country. The Citizen interviewed two artists, Melina Suleiman and Parveen Pazwak, about their journey of being female artists from Afghanistan, fleeing the country and leaving their loved ones behind, and the expectations they have from the international community in this time of crisis for Afghanistan. But I was just wondering, like, could you talk a little about, you know, what it's like being an artist in Afghanistan and coming from those roots? During my time in Afghanistan, uh, during the communist uh, government of Afghanistan, um, and 1978 uh, to 1992, uh, the artists uh, uh, were free uh, to create art, uh, but uh, not any art uh, that um, would reflect the tragic invasion of Soviet Union's uh, Red Army or the crimes um, uh, committed by their puppets and government. Uh, um, during the um, time of Islamic government of Mujahideen, um, 1992 uh, to 1996 uh, and after that uh, during uh, Taliban rule um, 1996 to 2001 <sighs> the artists uh, were forbidden to create any new art uh, or respect the old. Uh, we all know uh, the art breaking fate of a Bahamian uh, statues. Uh, so, uh, when I was out of Afghanistan uh, in the past 20 years of rebuilding of Afghanistan during Islamic Republic government, is uh, how our young, beautiful gener uh, generation uh, could be a representative of that time. Uh, the freedom of expression and um, a lot of popular media uh, channels made a promising land for art to grow. Um, although the ongoing war uh, with the poor economy um, uh, were heavy obstacles, uh, especially for artists uh, in provinces. Uh, but uh, there was uh, still overall, there was hope and opportunities. Uh, and it was until last week, yes, <laughs> last week, 2001, uh, 2021. Uh, so uh, really, Sharia, I wish uh, that uh, instead of me, uh, that since I'm more of writer, poet, uh, with uh, more than uh, publish, uh, 20 published books uh, in Farsi, Dari, and Pashto, uh, most of them for children, I wish you could have a famous, successful female artist from Afghanistan right now with you. Um, uh, unfortunately, the situation there is not giving us this option. Um, I lost my contact with, with my artist friends uh, uh, inside of Afghanistan in the past one week. Um, the reasons are obvious. Um, uh, they might be out of electricity, uh, no access to internet, um, out of um, mobile credit cards or uh, they may um, not have money. Uh, um, uh, as we know, the banks are closed. Uh, plus they simply might be afraid to be in touch with any outsider. Uh, they might be hiding in their homes uh, or already fled from it. Um, finally, they might stack in the airport right now. Uh, or not uh, even be in Afghanistan anymore. Um, anything is possible right now. Mm -hmm. 
and melina just because uh, we lost connection there and i think a bit of the recording was lost could you talk a little about uh, your journey from afghanistan to canada as an artist and why did you think that the art that you do uh, put you in an unsafe position again well i would like to start with the art why i do it because there is um there is not any answer why i want to make art or produce art because art is something i see it is running in my blood so when i was a kid i already see myself like making drawings and i really felt i already find myself like i'm an artist or i want to learn more so as i grow art is also growing me and also when i come from afghanistan i come to the netherlands also the method and the work of the art is also change so i i don't know how what will be in the future because it grows with me always so the reason why i come from afghanistan to here was a uh, few and uh, one of the reason which was uh, my own uh, art practice which was very political and also very questioning the culture and also the politics over there and a more was uh, really uh, uh, asking uh, or uh, asking for the women's right and also for the youth and it was uh, not only i expressed my own voice but also through my uh, uh, symbolic artworks i also it was also i expressed the voice of the women and also the youth what is happening because it's it was and it is still very limited uh, possibilities that youth can express what they feel and especially for the women have that they can express themselves that they exist so one of the reason when i start the the artwork in 2000 yeah 2010 i start to work as a professional artist and also i not only made a street art but also i did a lot of exhibitions in uh, some was in Kabul or Kandahar and the street art was also in Mazar in Helmut. So, and when I did the exhibitions in uh, Kandahar, most of the time, not most, almost all the time, with all the exhibitions which I had it with my own experience in Kandahar city, there was always a uh, man, really a lot of visitors comes and uh, i do appreciate even in that time the men's they really come and wanted to see the artwork but what i miss was a single woman standing in, uh, and presenting the work or being there was just only me and i have to cover my face just showing my two eyes and then i can present my artwork in kandahar city so still I am happy that I had this opportunity. But then I thought like, okay, for whom am I producing my artwork or making my artwork? Is it my artwork is just for a male or is it also female is included? Which was my most artwork was also for the voice of the woman. So, and that was also one of the reasons that they start the street artwork because the street, the walls itself, it's like a performing every day by itself. So I uh, start to make a street art that female or also those people who are not joining, for example, maybe the Taliban or maybe any kind of different uh, publicity, they can visit my work if they want or not. So that was one of the reasons. And also, uh, which my works were very provocative and I wanted the bigger uh, audience. So which I achieved, which was very nice and the last in uh, some years I achieved that. But there was also a part of was, which was uh, more negative and that was also achieved to the Taliban. Mm -hmm. So, in, and that was uh, one of the reasons they thought like, okay, this is uh, one girl, she's going out in the walls and uh, asking for her rights or standing, uh, expressing what she wants. But this can be multiple and gets more and more because they saw that there were more females also getting interested in that way. So the first thing they wanted to stop me. And first also was with the threat letters and then later on when I don't want it to stop. And then the second uh, was when it, the time arrived that they attacked on my family. So we moved to India. And uh, in the, uh, Mumbai, we stayed there for uh, three, four months. And then uh, we had to come back, of course. 
and uh, later on uh, Van Abbe Museum, which is uh, in Eindhoven, based in Eindhoven. It's a very international good uh, museum. Uh, they helped me to get the scholarship and I uh, come here to study my master's in contemporary art. And uh, I got uh, with my visa, I got a f uh, flight and come here. Easy process it was. Mm -hmm. And Parveen, so there are many artists like Melina who work on things that might put them in danger. So with now, with the current regime, what do you think the future looks like for artists and especially female artists in Afghanistan? Yes, uh, now with the return of Taliban, uh, it is uh, too soon to talk about the future of art. Uh, it is not just art, it is the destiny of our nations uh, facing a big question mark. Our const uh, constitutional law, our freedom of belief, our freedom of speech, our freedom of homeland, they are, is all, they are all hanging in the air. Yeah. Um, Still, uh, we should not forget uh, that uh, Aryan Afghanistan has a rich uh, uh, history of art, uh, culture, and uh, to um, uh, since uh, going back to innocent times, uh, so our roots are uh, deep enough uh, to not uh, uh, burn or freeze uh, by hot and cold blows of war and uh, fundamentalism. Uh, personally, I'm an um, uh, optimistic artist. Um, all my life, um, uh, I believed uh, in uh, art and humanity uh, and uh, So, if the people of the world like you, if uh, the media of the world like the citizen, if the global powers uh, uh, would not forget us, uh, we will not be forgotten. And we will not let that to happen. Uh, so, uh, dear uh, Sharia, my a message um, as a representative of artists that they are not able to talk right now is to uh, don't let go of Afghanistan. Uh, don't give up on Afghanistan. Stay with Afghanistan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. And Melina, since as an artist yourself, you represent women, you represent various communities. And right now, Afghanistan is in the media a lot. So what do you think that how can media represent Afghanistan in a way that represents it in a true light, but also does not cater to the stereotypes that the West puts on countries like Afghanistan? How do you think that the media and the West can improve in its representation of Afghanistan? First, I would like to just like uh, what, what you say, it, you know, like uh, I represent about the women's right. So I want to correct this already, the media. I am not representative of the woman only. I am the representative of myself as an Afghan. So that is a different thing because Afghan culture is really uh, different. And we have different culture, it's not one, and we are different languages. It's really huge. If I say I'm representative of the woman, but which woman? because it's a different culture. I'm from Kandahar. My culture is totally different than Bamiyan. Their need is different than mine. So what is uh, more, uh, I see it in the st stereotype and the, through the media. What is it, my own experience, I can share that because I cannot say about all everything and I don't know, I mean, I cannot be sure about it. 
So what is my experience always with the media, if it is a Western or non-Westerns, they always keep me or put me under the title of the Afghan Muslim artist woman. So sometimes even it is mentioned as an artist. So most of the time it's always frame me to represent like Afghan Muslim uh, woman. But why they don't just represent Afghan artist? Of course I'm woman, but it's not just my gender is playing the art. My gender is included. I cannot skip that. Of course it is part of it, but not always like it's representative of me always. So what is it in the media also when it comes into the news uh, outside, it's always uh, put extra in a way of like, uh, um, a Muslim person or uh, they bring always the religion, the country, and then the person comes. When it comes to the uh, European or Western, never see and uh, like in Canadian news or that says a Canadian man was did this uh, crime or something. They directly say like this man is did a crime, like not just always the nationality, blame a nationality. So what is it in the news always, the, it's kind of stereotype, they represent the artist itself. Also like my work, most of my work is also like, really the media is trying to frame my work in a, in a very small title. Like Malina work is representing Burka, but in a reality, my work is not representing Burka, my work is representing of the woman's right. So behind the burqa, there is a lot more that women writers exist there. Some cities and some villages, even the women, they want to wear the burqa by themselves, not it is a force. And of course, in most cities also it's a force. But uh, what about those people, that women, that they want to wear it because they feel protected or they, it's, it's kind of their culture or they grow up with this idea. So uh, is this, Burqa is not correct. I mean, if I if I target this idea of the burqa, you know, like if I say like uh, a woman right is under the burqa, you know, like, okay, what about those women this, they wanted to wear? So that's also one of the questions uh, what I see the misrepresentator of the media. But at this time, what I see it, the Taliban itself, they are playing super great performance. They say something else to the media, but they do a totally different opposite. I have my friends and my family in Afghanistan. What the Taliban, they say is women are allowed to go to their works back, which is not true. Because in um, Mili TV, it's like national TV of uh, Afghanistan, women, the employees, they went there to work send them back to the home. And also uh, most uh, people, uh, the people who work with the national armies uh, or uh, with the NGOs, uh, uh, now they, they go to the home one by one and make these people out and start killing them or they disappeared. Even they threaten the journalists. If they talk about these issues, they will uh, have the sentence to death. So now all in the media now, what is online and international, this, they show up these uh, false promises of the Taliban. Of course, no one believe on that, but still what the media is showing that part is more. But what is underground, it's, it's kind of very difficult to mention at this time. So that's also happening. Mm -hmm. And then Parveen, through your art, what do you feel like you can do and what do you want to do in order to uh, speak up about what's happening in Afghanistan. Uh, dear Sharia, as I told you, since my childhood, um, I'm expressing myself uh, through heart. Uh, but right now, uh, with uh, uh, my new painting that uh, you uh, uh, saw in Twitter, and kindly asked me to uh, talk with you. Uh, um, my title in three language, the two official language of Hansan, Pashto, Dari, Farsi, and in, uh, English, uh, uh, is that uh, to Ermi uh, Nakra, Faramusham Nakun, Forget Me Not. Uh, and uh, the message is that, that I want to uh, show uh, 
that kind of pictures that already is, uh, happened in Afghanistan and is uh, continuing to happen. And uh, uh, by showing of them, uh, I want to tell, please don't forget what already happened. Don't repeat it. Don't repeat it. Accept it that it happened. Uh, ask for forgiveness and um, and don't do it again. Uh, because one of the problem of uh, Afghanistan's history is repeating and not uh, learning from the past. And uh, mm. every new beginning is a starting like that. It's something new. Like now, as uh, Malina mentioned, the Taliban want to represent like a new, new, <laughs> we already know them. We already experienced them. And they didn't accept any ceasefire until they reached to the power. And now they are speaking of the peace. So my painting is simply showing that it already happened or it's already happening in um, uh, a small um, provinces or uh, faraway provinces uh, when the media is not looking. So please don't, f that, uh, I want to be the voice of that victims, but I don't know that I'm deserved to be or not. Um, as uh, Malina said, uh, even it's a uh, daring to say I'm a representative of the woman. I, I could not represent them. I, I'm not uh, deserved that, um, that uh, position, you know, but because now I have at least my voice with you. That's why, because of this is a specific situation that most of the artists inside of Afghanistan, they are afraid to talk. Mm, privilege, <laughs> I give that permission to myself to uh, take that privilege uh, to say that. Um, so, uh, you know, another thing, Sharia, um, is not just the burden of language, uh, English, uh, that I could not express myself with words right now, clearly. It's, um, it's uh, the confu uh, confusion, you know, it's the sadness. It's um, the thing that we said all the things already. There's, uh, that's why I started uh, more than uh, recently, more than... Um, um, writing the painting uh, because one of the reasons is that that all the people literate or illiterate they could see it and also because uh, the words um, are you know I could not tell them I'm so uh, upset um, uh, irritated confused you know um, and in pain, in real heart breaking pain. And also I'm scared, um, maybe I'm not scared for my own uh, life or family because I'm outside of Afghanistan. But you, you know, when you love your homeland, you could not separate yourself from the destiny of your nation. So I'm scared because it's already happened when the world was watching. So what if it happened again? I feel so bad for my young generation that they grow up in a, um, another environment with the ongoing war, poor economy, but as I told you, uh, still uh, there was hope and opportunities. Mm, uh, so yeah, I, I think it's enough. Uh, sometimes, yes, I'm thinking, what should I write now that I didn't write? What should I tell that I didn't? Uh, so that's why at least now I'm drawing because I didn't give enough time uh, for that uh, area of art at least. So thank you. Yeah. And Melina, what about your family? Uh, are they still in Afghanistan and how are they? My family, yes, they are in Afghanistan and they are uh, still the, uh, in their home. 
So uh, my brother and my sisters, uh, they all with my mother, they all stay now in one home to have eye on each other. And uh, yeah, that's what is for now. But I, I don't know about their future, even like the next day or tomorrow. So constantly every day I'm talking with them. And uh, I don't know about tomorrow. And my last year, safe or not. Mm -hmm. And my last question to you, Melina, is just that how can the people of Afghanistan resist this? At this time, it's the moment that everyone is looking for their life. They are in survival situation. It's really hard that someone now to stand for themselves because it's more like in survival land, like if someone is uh, diving, not diving, if um, we, you're standing in front of the sea and you're visiting the sea and someone push you and throw you in the sea and you don't know how to swim. And you are more in a way of like trying to survive first. So I don't say Afghan people, they don't know how to swim because they grow up in this situation, myself itself. Like I grew up when I was, this is all what I, my youth was. I was playing with all these kind of things even. My youth was that. So it is something we, uh, we survive. And I'm sure we are gonna survive again and again. But also we lost a lot. In a way, uh, at this moment, is if I talk about the artist's life, even. First, they need to survive. So no one knows if they are gonna be alive tomorrow or not. And somehow most people, they are involved working with the government or working with the NGOs or with Americans. So what is about their life? Are they safe or not? And who is there to stand at this moment because there is not even government yet. So, and still I would like to ask, not ask, I, I would hope, I mean, I'm hoping, but not at this moment, but later on I'm hoping that uh, the women, they will stand for their rights and the youth, they will stand for their rights and they will uh, ask like, okay, we are not gonna accept what you're all gonna bring to us, especially now it's a lot of media, international countries, all having eye on Afghanistan. So Afghanistan become a center of all attention. So this is also the time, not only Afghan can ask for their rights, for their safety, but also about the internationals, about the NATO, what they promise. They broke all the promise and just let it as to burn. Not let it as, but in fact, they've made a fire in a way to be burned. So in that way, my, uh, my question is not only from Afghans itself to stand for themselves. Of course they are and they should, and they will. I don't say they should, but they will while they're a bit to be survived in a way. But now it's question is coming to the internationals, to the NATO, what they are really doing now. What about the Americans, which they give all the hope, expectations, especially like women, they touch, they feel a little bit what is freedom to be. I don't say they were totally free before, but they felt a little bit. And suddenly everything, everything they took from them. That is not at all any way fair what is the international Americans did with Afghanistan. So my first question is from them and also from all internationals that they have to take support. They should give support to Afghanistan and try to not accept the Taliban's until they don't give the rights of the female and also the youth. Of course, they are performing, but they should also put the people of the Afghan government in their positions. Not only the Taliban should be accepted. They have to be more careful, not just think or see what the media brings to them. They should not be trusted blind. They should see the situations that's what i'm thinking and also one of the way what i see 
Thank you so much, Madhya and Parveen, for talking with me. This was a really insightful conversation, and I hope that your family you. back home uh, feels safe. And I really hope that the international community comes up in a way to support Afghanistan, and there is more authentic, true news coming out of the country. And we don't, as media, we don't only cater to stereotypes, but actually help Afghan people in this fight. Of course, of course, we really need support from media. That's that's one of our one of the support at this moment. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear. Thank you for having us.